Our theme has been, I will honor God. Uh, I, I stopped two Sundays ago. Last Sunday I spoke about Thanksgiving because we had a wonderful lady giving thanks in the third service. Uh, but I want to go pick back what I had started. My topic today is the place of honor. Last time we said you can honor God even in hard times. Hard times we can honor God. Show me the man you honor and I will know what kind of a man you are. Show me the man you honor and I will know what kind of a man you are. Proverbs 18 and verse number 12. Proverbs 18 and verse number 12 says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. I think reading that to you a couple of times, I hope it is going to make sense to you that before the destruction of the heart of man, is halted. But before you are honored, there is humility. Sometimes we follow map on Google. We call it Google Maps. But sometimes they take us to the wrong places. You and me know. For example, mine has a tendency when I'm joining Uhuru Highway from Museum Hill, it tells me to take the left and I'm going to maybe Vary Road. If you took the left, it will take you back to Globe Roundabout because that's the only way again you can come back. So when I get there, I normally ignore it because I know my left will not take me there. It's like when you travel with someone in, and uh, someone is driving, especially when I'm driving and somebody is giving me instruction, I normally ask him, Unasema left he? I'm a left here. Because there are some people who tell you left, but they meant this one. So it's always good to know which left are you talking about? Which left are we talking about? And when it comes to honor, we often believe that we, we know what it is. But most of the times we look for that word or that honor in the wrong places despite our good intentions. So we often believe that we are in the right place. But after a honest evaluation, we find that we have honored ourselves. In fact, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse 44, the Bible says, how, how can you believe? You which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from the Lord. Yani, if, if, if honor is what I, you give me and what I give you. And we don't believe the honor that comes from God. That is the kind of question that is being asked here. Honor. The Pharisees to whom Jesus was speaking were looking for honor in the wrong places. Because true honor could not be found from one another. True honor comes from God. And it is good for you to know that everything that happens in life it's like this. Before destruction comes pride. Before honor comes humility. That's what the, the verse that we read tells us. And it is also good to know that I can find honor in no other way than the honor that comes from God himself. Let me give you an illustration of honor a little bit. It is recorded that there used to be a man that used to live with his, his father in the city. The father had gotten old and was living with his son and daughter-in-law in the city. When, when, we grow on a, when we grow old, it's good for you to know, a few things will happen. Amen. A few things are going to happen. Number one, which is going to happen, is that when an old person is eating, some of them, not all of them, hopefully I will not be there. 
they, they might, first of all, chew. And as they chew, some of it comes out again. A little goes in. So this old man had that habit. He would even miss the mouth. Pick the spoon. And he's shaking because those things also happen to old people. He's shaking, he's shaking, he's shaking. And before he gets, he gets it to the wrong place and they spill over. So that's what the, young, the old man used to do. Every time he's shaking, he's shaking. But one day, alipopewa chakula na saani ya kauli. Inaitua China wea. Akikula, akatatemeka, saani chini ka. Ikavunjika. Mama kamuita wewe kwa nini unabivu kama ngurue? Hapa. Unabivu kama ngurue. Unakula kama ngurue. Tena unabivu kama ngurue. Wakakubaliana na mume wake. Wamtengene mahali. Pale jikoni. Wamtengeneze kitu kama ile inakuliwa na ngombe. Awe akiwekewa chakula pale. Na akawe kwa kwa kona. Na akakaa pale kwa muda. Ya anakulia pale. Kwa muda. Akitetemekea pale. Unajua hiyo hata ikianguka haikufi. Haifariki. Haifunjiki. Haikufi. Haifariki. Translation nayo ni hajabu. By the way, I'm doing this deliberate because my mom is watching. You know, I told her when I'm speaking and she's watching. Tayaka kiswahili ya kutosha. So, the couple had a four-year-old son. So one day, the son is met by the parents preparing something like that one the grandfather has and eating with other kitchen. So they asked him, what are you doing? And the boy smiled. Told them, I'm preparing something so that when I grow old, I'll be putting food for both of you. You'll be eating like grandfather. It is sunk on them that they had dishonored their father and therefore their son was going to dishonor them. And you know some of us when we started coming to Nairobi, we used to hear stories. Baba na mama wanatoka geshagi, na wananuka, na wako na tuduia tuna ini, anapigwa dawa kwanza. Na watoto wake hali wamekuta huku Nairobi. That is dishonor. And we need to know where honor is. Remember what I told you, show me the man you honor and I will know what kind of a man you are. Honor. The Pharisees were, and Jesus was speaking to them, they were looking for honor in the wrong place. I don't know whether you're looking for honor in the wrong place. We often have a perception of what it is that God is calling us to be. But thankfully, Jesus mercifully and gently dealt with the disciples regarding this matter of their pride and left us wonderfully patent for the true greatness. The speaker in the morning, bless your heart, your speaker in the morning, the first service, stole my sermon, this part only, of humility. He said, somebody can say I'm humble, but he's saying it, but he is not humble, ni mdomo tu. And there could be some of us that have false humility. It is not real. It is not within. Unajua kunyamaza si humility? I was telling Dr. we had a G12 somewhere the other day. And I was saying I discovered a mental case. Mental case. All of you if you went to, to, to a psychiatrist you have a mental case. Ukinyamaza, kuna jina ya mental case. So, if they are told you, have, you are a mental case, all, all what they need to know is that you have a, me, a mental case. See, one time, mzea meibiwa hapa, madhare hapa, madhare. Hameenda banki, hametoa pesa, lakini hakuwa kija madhare, alikuwa kienda kariyo banki. Si wamefitika mulango kubwa. Vijana wanasama, nisaidie ni tutoe baba. Tulikuwa tunampereka madhare hospital, lakini hamekata tusaidieni so who helped mzee anasema mimi sina kicha lakini na... alitolewa kwa sababu kicha unaweza kuwa ukisema huna 
So, humility does not mean you are quiet. There are some of us that are quiet, but we are so proud. Pride. So, this is it. It is only because we look for it in the wrong places. And Jesus is dealing with it among the disciples. Mark 10, verse 32 to 37. I'll quote a lot of scriptures so that we can have an understanding. So, a lot of it will be scriptures. Now, they were on the road going to Jerusalem and Jesus was going before them and they were amazed as they followed him. They were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside again and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And that day he will rise again. Then James and John. Now, you remember what I told you that people, you need to learn to listen. Because some people don't listen. Jesus is talking about suffering. He is not talking about glory. But there are some guys here, they are not listening to what Jesus is saying. Listen to what they say. Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. ask for anything. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? Then the guy said, Grant us that we may sit one on your right, one on in your glory. Were they actually listening to what Jesus was saying? And a lot of us have a problem. We don't listen to what Jesus is saying. So what was in them? Pride. Now if you look at that scripture outside that, you might think, no, that Jesus told them they can ask. You ask and it shall be done unto you. But the truth of the matter is, pride is the one they wanted to be lifted and sit up on the high places. Pride is so terribly blinding. So even when Jesus was speaking of the most spiritual significant event that could uh, happen and take place to mankind of delivering the people. The disciples were thinking about their own significance. So sometimes we talk about honor and we are all looking at what we will get. You know, let me be a little political a little bit, though I will never be your president, I will never be MCA, I will never be women rep. Anything that happens to this country, if you will look with the eyes that are not tribal, you look at it. It's all geared to leaders. They think about themselves. And truth be told, they don't care about you. And also, the clouds that you see following them, they are not following them for nothing. They are following them for something. Uh, let me tell you something also. Before they go, they have been given something. You cannot have... We well, Have you ever asked yourself? They will not come to you, but they will... Be, oh, somebody ask. When watu wa Kenya wakuwa gina kazi, tumelipu wa buwana. Kira mtu 500, 500, tunajaa dorora, tunajaa baringo, tunajaa kabarane, tunajaa everywhere. But the point that I'm bringing is, we honor them to use us, but what they are looking for is their places. Not your place. I know people from central province, one man, one vote. Oh, one man, one vote. But if you look at one man, one vote, it is one man, one vote, another MP, another MCA. Zire waliiba. Sasa wanataka kuziiba hata zaidi. Ziki gawanyu wakwadi zitafika. By the way, sina jawabu, asanti bitris kwa kuomba. Sisi tu ni kuomba, tukumambia mungu tukumbuke. Lakina fikiria bitris tuzomba maombigine, watu wachanga muke, wawe wakatae kutumiwa. Tukatae tu. Seme siendi, sichukui yo miambiri. When I was living in Zimmerman, 20 shillings was the only money. They do wazi pesa nyingi sana. Kuangu, kulikuwa na kaukuta. Na walikuwa wakipewa 20 shillings hapo. Nikiangalia hivi naona kila mtu anapewa 20, 20, 20. Na wataleta fujo 
in the 80s huku wataleta fujo sana 20 bob of course iko sababu town ilikuwa ni kama shilingi tatu kwa da town kwa hivyo ukipewa 20 bob si utaenda siku kadha these are people and all what their concern was even the disciples pride was they were thinking about their place lakini wapewe mahali pa juu pa kuheshimika mahali pa juu pa kuheshimika hawako msikiza yeso but jesus now changes the gears and with amazing patience gives them this instruction in mark 10:42 to 45 but jesus called them to him and said unto him you know that they which but jesus called them to himself and said to them you know that those who are considered rulers of the gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them yet it shall not be so among you jesus is telling them but whosoever whosoever means whoever desires to be great among you he shall be your servant that was telling them and whosoever wants to be chief among you shall be a servant for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many did you notice that jesus did not condemn the desire for greatness but he simply redefined what was necessary to achieve it if you want to achieve greatness you have to be a servant of all if you want to be great, he was just redirecting their ambition james and john had gone out and preached to lady they had performed the miracles they had the sacrifice they had left their all they had they had recognition as leaders among the disciples yet they had not yet found the true place of honor and jesus is putting them to the true place of honor and the true place of honor is you to serve others the great place of honor and even today we find ourselves motivated by self interest self indulgence self honor we have a false sense of self sufficiency and pursue selfish ambition for the purpose of self glorification that's what we we think even bishops and pastors all what we are looking is you know i remember in the 70s somebody was asking which is greater bishop or pastor then he stood the pastor then he says from today don't call me bishop i'm a pastor then he met somebody who says no bishop is greater because bishop has many pastors he did not have many pastors so he has to go out and make many pastors so that you can be great it is all selfish do you know the pentecostal movement in the world apart from africa hear me or africans wherever they are the senior most person is called the pastor full stop if his leading congregation is called an overseer finished but wow oh, oh hapa kenya tukiitwa bishop what is the next one from a bishop what is the next one cardinal what is the next one from cardinal pope They met our bishop one day and bishop is introducing all of us he's saying this is bishop kimani he's my assistant general secretary this is bishop yachana is the treasurer and so on and so forth then the person after they were introduced then he said so then you are a bishop he said no i'm a bishop anyway I'm, that is for another day the thing is that if you are not careful and jesus knew about this there are people that are struggling that even today we have full sense of self sufficiency we pursue selfish ambition for the purpose of self glorification we often serve others for the honor of ourselves we mask it as a service for god but in reality we are doing it so that people can serve us nothing more than fleshy attempt to appear as something other than we really are we will be tempted to think that it is pride or arrogance but can i tell you something it is being ignorant hiyo hata sio sio nini ni sio kuwa tutu ni kuwa ignorant sio arrogance kuwa ignorant it is becoming ignorant of what and who we really are and being ignorant of whom christ is really is 
We sang a song, Chaku Tumaini Sina. I have nothing on my own. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus. On Christ the solid rock, that's the only place I can stand because all other grounds, they are sinking. Even the one that you stand on is sinking. So have proper perspective about this. The product of ignorance is pride. Spurgeon said this. I might paint it as being the worst malformation of all the monstrous things in creation. It has nothing lovely in it, nothing proportion in it, but everything in disorder. It is altogether the very reverse of the creatures which God has made, which are pure and holy. Pride, the firstborn son of hell, is indeed like its parent, all uncreen and veil, and in it there is neither form or function or comeliness. That's what pride is. And then he went on to describe it with the following terms. Four, it is groundless thing, it is brainless thing, it is the maddest thing, it is unstable and uncertain thing. Pride. Even people can walk with the pride. Na iliko na walk alafu na sahau. Kwa sababu si ndani yako, ni kujifanya tu. Hata ile ango, the academic ango. You remember the academic ango? Na vitabu umebeba hauta soma zote ni kuonyesha tu. Four things, then I will be done. Number one, the question that we need to ask ourselves, where is the place of honor? It may not be exactly where you think it is, but where is it? Number one, the place of honor begins at the bottom, not the top. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, you have to be a servant of all. Luke 14, verse 10 to 11. This is a very, a very good one. And, and let me tell you the truth. Inafanyikaga hii sana. Kuna wakati moja, nilienda, tukakana na Bishop Emeritus wa, wa, wa Sitam, who you are to Uginde. Because he's my friend. So we were talking and we sat together. We had gone for a great thing at um, uh, Kenya Assemblies of God. So there were many other bishops that were there. Then somebody who knew us thought we are supposed to sit up. So somebody came and picked me and Bishop and we are taken up. Never mind where we sat. We never sat in front of the up. We sat at the back of the up. Then somebody who came who did not know us and came and told us that you are not supposed to sit here. So we went back and sat where we sat. Now when they came for us, finally I refused to go. I told Oginde, hii haibu. Tunaeza enda nawe pale. We ni mkubwa wadini, mimi siyo mkubwa wadini. Alafu nirudishwe si kuenda, nirikatalia pale. Nikambia, Bishop, please. Si nimeenda, nikarudishwe si endi ya potena. So in other words, I know what Jesus was talking about. You sit in the wrong place, somebody greater than yourself comes, and then you are told, mm -mm. When thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, and when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worshipped in the presence of them that sit at the meat with thee. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Luke 1, verse 54. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them from their low degree. God is doing something. Proverbs 25, verse 5, and verse 6 and 7. Put not for thyself in the presence of the kings, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come here, than that thou should be put lower in the presence of the prince from thy eyes have seen. Watu wa wakuwa wamekuja wengi, tulipo perekwa, 
hata tuliporudishwa watu hawakuwa wengi lakini sasa kama ningearudi tena kuonekana mahakibisho bwa ameingia nirudishwe ndio aibu ingekuwa ile kubwa kubwa afadhali ikae pale mabisho pale tumekaa kutukiambia tusimame tuinue mikono yetu tuseme tunashukuru Mungu kwa sababu it is so embarrassing eh hey, no wanda mimi utaka kukaa nyuma afadhali nichukuliwe nyuma niletwe mbele kuliko kukaa na kiberebere yangu mbele alafu ninarudiwa nyuma na kiberebere yangu the place of honor begins at the bottom it doesn't begin at the top land that this is not to be afraid humility that simply puts on it this way you just you are not attempting humility you are actually humble because those two are miles apart because humility is defined simply as an accurate view of oneself humility defined simply is an accurate view of oneself john the baptist was so powerful man yet he understood whom he was and who Christ was in the gospel of Luke 3:15 and 16 and as the people were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of John whether he was the Christ or not John answered saying unto them all I indeed baptize you with water but one mightier than I cometh the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and fire to attempt to put on something which is not yours is a display of pride so last week we spoke on our, of honoring god in hard times so that even in our affliction is often through those hard times that god does a work work of breaking us down work of placing us in the furnace of affliction so that he may begin to prepare us for a place of honor at times you may wonder why god appears to be continually against you You find no good success in all your ventures. Could it be that you remain unbroken in God's attempt to humble you because some things happen for us to be humbled? Could it be that God's plan is to exalt you but in that plan you keep on thwarting it? Could it be it is your desires that exalt you than him? We need to know our place of honor is when we start in the middle Pro- proverbs 15 verse the 3 the fear of the lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility number 2 the place of honor begins with the service matthew 23 11 and 12 but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted and that is key but leadership in the world is the other way no wonder jesus is saying in the world your chiefs exalt themselves but that should not be so in the kingdom we humble ourselves we humble ourselves number three, the place of humility comes with many advantages when we humble ourselves there are advantages first peter 5:6 the bible says humble yourself before under the almighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time there is some exaltation there is some lifting up luke 18 and verse 14 i tell you this this man went down to his house justified than the other men i want to read it from verse number 10 two men went up to the temple to pray one a pharisee and the other a tax collector The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself God I thank you that I am not like other men extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this tax collector Have you prayed a prayer like that Yaani Mungu mimi niko poa alafu naangalia dada unasema Yeah sio kama I fast twice a week I fast 40 days in the beginning of the year I fast 21 days in Jan- uh, July I give tithe of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven but bent his breast saying God be merciful to me as a sinner. You know this man learned something. Already he is condemned by his fellow man. He was looking for God to exalt him because men had condemned him. So he says 
He cannot look up. He says, Lord, have mercy on me already. I'm condemned. I'm a sinner. Verse 14 says, this man went home because finally Razima Utaenda. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Think for a moment of what is available for those who walk humbly before God. Number one, God lives with the humble. Hey, I like that. God lives with the humble. Isaiah 57 verse 15, may God live with you. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy places with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. The Lord lives with you. Humble yourself. Number two, God listens to the request, to the request of the humble. Second Chronicles 34 verse 27. Because thine heart was tender and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place and against the inhabitants thereof and humblest thyself before me and didst rent thy clothes and weep before me, I have even had thee also, says the Lord. Psalms 9 and verse 12. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. So there are some benefits for us. It's not useless to be humble. Number three, the humble are the recipients of more grace. James 4 verse 6. But he giveth more grace. May God give you more grace. Wherefore he says God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace and more grace unto the humble. First Peter 5 and verse 5. Likewise, you youngs, younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yes, all ye be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud but giveth grace to the humble. Number four, he exhorts, he lifts and he promotes the humble. Matthew 23 verse 12, the Bible says, and whosoever shall exhort himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exhorted. I want God to exhort me. James 4 and verse 10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Number five, he considers the humble to be truly great. Matthew 18, for whosoever therefore shall be humble shall humble himself as a little child. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And number six, it is the prerequisite for true riches, honor, and fullness of life. Proverbs 22 and verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Final point, point number four. How can I develop true humility? Number one, if that is the desire of your heart, look to serve instead of being served. Look to do something instead of sitting down for you to be served. Number two, look fresh in your relationship with Angalia Usiano Wakona Mungu. Because nothing breeds hardness of the soul like a stale relationship with God. Moyo Mungumu ni kwa sababu huna usiano na Mungu. The more you relate with God, the more He will humble you. I told you, Ukiona Toto is a ya muti. Na wengi wetu hapa ni Toto is, including myself. Ukiona Toto is a ya muti. Ujue, ameweko wekwa na mtu. Hawezi panda. Ni Toto is. Hi, Toto is. Wale wakubaliani na hiyo ni kwa sababu unafikiria wewe uko shapa hapa. Sisi ni matoto hizi bwana. Ukiona toto hizi inapeleka gari ujue hiyo gari toto hizi imewekwa kwa hiyo gari. Si toto hizi anaweza nunua gari. You know. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I don't know where this came but Simba anataka kula toto hizi. Na namwambia nitakukula. Takukula saa hii. Na toto hizi akasema nipatie tu dakika kama kumi. alafu nikule. Sina shida. Sasa toto hizi akazunguka, akazunguka, akazunguka round, akakanyanga, akazunguka round. Baka mahali alikuwa ameketi kwa amezunguka ame, kuna nyasi kukawa vumbi. Rafa akamwambia Simba sasa nikule. Simba akasema ulikuwa ukifanya nini? You know you have to ask. Ulikuwa ukiniroga ama ulikuwa ukifanya? Hapana. Nilikuwa nikifanya hivi. Sasa ukinikula watu watasema Haikuwa raisi kunikula.
Now the point there was what is your legacy? Utawacha nini? Huyo toto is amewacha vumbi na ameliwa kwa sababu toto is awezi ameliwa tu. Hey, number three, find find no service to mine you for you to do. Find something. Find something. Don't call it mine or do it. Number four, look for opportunity to serve that no one will know but God. Yani, tumikia mungu na act of zingine usifanya watu wajue. And there are some people here, by the way, you don't know. They just come to decorate this place. Wanaweka tumawa. Wanaweka zile vitamba. Na hawa muwaju. Kuna wekino na kuja kuosha hapa hata muwaju. Take the lowest position first. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Today I had many illustrations. Can I finish with the last one? This auctioneer was battered and this auctioneer was scared. Really scared. The thought of scarcity was his while. To waste much time on the old violin. He was holding an old violin. He held it up in, in, with, with a smile. And then he was asking, what am I bid, good folk? He cried. We will start the bidding for, for me. One dollar. One dollar. Now two. Only two dollars. And who will make three? Three dollars once. Three dollars twice. Going. Going. Just before he went, somebody said, no. Amze from the back came. Picked the old violin. And played a song with the violin. You know, the song was so good, then he gave it back to the person that was selling. With a bigger smile, he said, A thousand dollars. Who will make it two? Two thousand dollars. Who will make it three? Three thousand dollars. One, two, three. And it was bought three thousand dollars. What made it worth? As long as the person who holds it knows nothing about it, then it is useless. But when it is held by a violinist, yani mtu anajua kazi ya violin, he adds value into it. And I'm saying this, may God hold you, may the, the Lord add value to you as you humble yourself because that when the master touches anything, he puts value into it and brings honor into it. Yes, when God holds you, he puts honor into you. And every Christian should ask because there are choices between you. Are you going to humble yourself or are you going to allow God to humble you? Because when God humbles you, ni kama pale si tunakataka kuenda kupumzika. Siku moja unajikuta uko hospitali, upende usipende. Utoke kwa kitanda. Wale watu wanakujua wanakuambia, wewe rehe tu hao huruke. You know you could... Unaweza sema ati ni mkomgonjwa lakini wala unakujua unasema wewe. Hii kukimbia kimbia 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 umefungwa sasa hapa huwezi toka. But I'm saying let's put ourselves in the hands of him that can add value into ourselves. We humble ourselves, place ourselves into him then he would add value to you and he will add value to me. And for you that God has already put value into you. Remember sio wewe our heavenly father the father of our lord and savior jesus christ help us as we walk in this life to know the place of valley of honor to know the place of honor and heavenly father to know that honor will not start from the top but it will start from the bottom to know that honor all oh, what honor does is to allow me to serve others so that i can be honored by humbling myself and finding a place to serve then this is translated into honor by God. By knowing my position like John the Baptist and knowing who Christ is like John did. Gives honor to John the Baptist, gives honor to me and gives honor to Christ, the one we honor. Maybe you are here in the service today or you are watching from wherever place you are. I tell you again, the only place of value is in the hands of your maker. And I pray that you can make this wonderful choice today of giving your life to him.
putting your life in his hands so that he can put value into you. Where people despised you, God gives you honor. Where people looked down on you, God lifts you up. Where people look down on you, God gives you success in the things that you do. Would you place yourself in the hands of God? Would you give your life to Jesus? If you are in the service, I want to give you an opportunity. If you lift up your hand, whether you are in the tent, there are some people in the tent, or whether you are in the corridor, there are people in the corridor, or if you are in the auditorium here, if you lift up your hand, we will pray with you in the name of the Lord. Are you there? Are you there? If you are not there and you are at home then, and because at home I cannot see, would you pray this prayer with me? Would you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Shave me. Deliver me. And from today, I place myself in your hands to put value. And from today, I am a child of God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. I am saved in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer seriously and you have asked the Lord to come into your heart, I pray that God is going to help you to be more honest so that somebody can help you by calling the numbers there. Somebody will receive it and walk with you and your life will never be the same again. And everybody listening to me, may the Lord give us honor this week. May you find a place of honor as you find something to do for his glory. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you.